Snow is a very good insulator, and I sometimes decide to leave it on our hoop house and other structures to keep our plants warmer. Today I'll talk about how we use snow as insulation, when I decide to remove it from our structures, and when I leave it alone. The insulation value of snow varies depending on the type of snow, but generally speaking it has an R value of about 1 per inch, and 12 inches of snow has an insulation value similar to a 2x4 framed wall filled with fiberglass insulation. Much of snow's insulation value comes from tiny pockets of air trapped in its lattice structure. The insulating benefits of air gaps are well known. For example, some greenhouses use double-walled plastic with air force into the gap between layers to provide extra insulation. Because snow is such a good insulator, I sometimes choose not to remove it from our hoop house and other structures. Now let's talk about the factors I consider when deciding to remove the snow or to leave it as insulation. My first consideration is a no-brainer. If I think the snow will be heavy enough to damage our hoop house or hinge low tunnels, I remove at least some of the snow to make sure there's no damage. As a general rule, I don't worry about six inches of snow or less causing damage, but if more than that is expected, I'll often go out in the middle of a snowstorm to remove snow, especially if it's wet and heavy. I'm most concerned about protecting our hoop house and hinge low tunnels because I put a lot of work into them. The coal frame should be able to handle any amount of snow, and I'm less concerned if there's damage to our temporary low tunnels, which I'll be taking down soon anyway. Now, assuming the snow isn't heavy enough to cause damage, let's look at the other factors I consider when deciding to remove the snow or leave it as insulation. Though a cover of snow will reduce the amount of heat escaping the hoop house, it will also prevent the sun from warming it and even a little bit of sun can dramatically increase the temperature inside the hoop house. So I'd rather have that warming effect of the sun than to simply reduce the amount of heat escaping. So in the morning, no matter how cold it is, if it's expected to be sunny, I remove snow from the south side of the hoop house to let the sun in. Even on days below 10 degrees Fahrenheit, it can get up into the 70s under double cover when it's sunny. Though I remove the snow from the south side of the hoop house, as you can see here, I don't remove it on the north side. Again, assuming it's not heavy enough to cause any problems. Since no sun enters from the north, there's no benefit in removing the snow, while keeping it in place provides a little bit of insulation and prevents some heat loss. I use the same approach on low tunnels that are in sunny areas of the garden. I remove the snow from the south side to let the sun in, but I leave it on the north side for insulation. And I always remove the snow from cold frames that are in sunny parts of the garden. Now let's look at the scenarios in which I wouldn't remove the snow at all, again assuming it's not heavy enough to cause any damage. First, if it starts snowing later in the day, shortly before sunset or after sunset, I won't remove the snow. Instead, I'll leave it to provide insulation at night. Second, if it's a very cold and totally overcast day, I'll leave the snow in place to act as insulation, because its insulation value is likely to be greater than the warmth from the limited sun. Finally, all of the structures in this area are completely shaded at this time of year, so I actually welcome the insulation provided by snow. For example, we're overwintering carrots and parsnips in this cold frame, and I won't remove any snow from the cold frame until the sun starts hitting this part of the garden again. That should happen in late winter or early spring, and I'll remove the snow to thaw the soil so we can harvest our parsnips and carrots. So snow is a very good insulator, and basically we don't remove it unless it's heavy enough to possibly damage a structure or it's preventing the sun from warming our crops. Hopefully this video gave you some ideas on how you can use snow to insulate your hoop house, greenhouse, cold frames, and other structures. If you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos on how to grow a lot of food on a little land without spending much or working harder than you have to.